One of my viewers asked a question about the OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and I do not know the answer however I do have some free time today so let's find out. This video is for you Xboxer 1985. Now the first thing I need to do to test this is to connect it up to my batteries. What I have here are two Group 27 deep cycle batteries. Uh, probably better than what you would have in your vehicle for running an inverter given that there's two in parallel. I also have them connected up to my standard 45 amp battery charger. And one thing I'm going to note this time is when I first connect these, uh, if I just take this cable which is hooked up to the inverter and touch this post, there's likely going to be a large spark. It'll vaporize a small amount of lead from the battery post. Lead is toxic in its vapor form, so that's not good. I'm inside my house right now. And also it eats away at the soft lead of these battery posts. They intentionally use soft lead on these so that you can get a really good bite with clamps and uh, that way it doesn't make too much heat. What I do to avoid this problem, since I'm connecting and disconnecting inverters all the time here, is I just have this little 1 ohm resistor. I hook it up to my cable, put it on this post briefly, and now my inverter is charged up to battery voltage. And when I make this connection, there's no spark. So I'll hook this thing up and we'll see what this inverter can do. I have the inverter hooked up to the batteries, and now I'm going to turn it on with the remote that I installed in a recent video. Pretty slick. The question that was asked is, at what output wattage does this inverter's output voltage sag to 110 volts? And that is a really good question, actually, because a lot of inverters, especially the lower cost ones like this one, do sag in their output voltage when they get heavily loaded and uh, a lot of times they actually fib on the output wattage. For example, Ames Power, I found out, their 2000 watt inverter, you can put a load that is nominal 2000 watts at 120 volts output, and it will run it. However, the output voltage will sag down to about 100 volts, and you only get uh, a little less than 1500 watts out uh, once it's fully loaded. In any case, the OSP Tiger Claw isn't that bad, I don't think, but Let's find out what it really does. It's all hooked up, the inverter's on, the output voltage is approximately 120 volts, and I'm going to turn on this electric heater to its 600 watt setting. And when I do, you can see that the voltage drops to about 115 volts. However, this isn't completely fair because I do get some voltage drop in the output cabling, the cable going to the power strip, the power strip outlet, the kilowatt meter has resistance, this has resistance. So this 115 volts probably isn't accurate. So I need a separate meter to, to uh, properly measure the voltage. And there we go, two multimeters. This one is plugged directly into the out, the second outlet on the inverter, and this is that same kilowatt meter. So now I'm going to turn the heater on low. And actually there was very little loss in the cabling. But uh, I'm still going to continue using this one because it is more accurate since they don't have that cabling loss. I'll switch this to watts. And now I'm going to slowly turn on these 100 watt light bulbs and we'll see what the output voltage does at various wattages. Seven hundred watts, hundred fifteen volts, that's good. 900 watts, still 118 volts. It actually went up. That's quite interesting. With 1100 watts, we're still looking good on voltage. And 1200 watts. The voltage has started to sag a little bit, 113 volts, but that's still good. Okay, now I have the heater on medium which is apparently about 800 watts here, and I'm going to screw in some more light bulbs and we'll watch the voltage again. Twelve hundred, the voltage is sagging. And somewhere around 13 to 1400 watts is when the voltage sags to 110 volts. So, there's the answer to your question, Xbox for 1985. 
The OSP Tiger Claw can do about 1400 watts before it sags to 110 volts. However, this is not the conclusion to the video because I'm using a very good battery bank over here. Now, I'm curious what happens if we have a more typical setup, a single automotive battery without the car running. So I'm going to change the setup a little bit and turn the camera back on. And this is the change that I've made. This second battery is now disconnected. The inverter is running only off of one battery and the charger is not connected up to it. So we will now have a lower voltage going into the inverter and uh, we'll see what that does to its performance. The inverter is once again on, now running off of just one battery and no charger. Switch this to watts and we'll try the same test again to see if there's a difference and what that difference is. Heater on low. The output voltage still looks quite good. Turn it on medium. Again, just like before, it's doing quite well. And now I will uh, increase the load with these 100 watt light bulbs again. 900 watts, it sags a little bit. 1000 watts, now it's down to 110 volts. So with a lower input voltage, it cannot supply quite as much power before sagging to 110 volts. And as my battery drains down, I suspect that this will get worse and worse. So it depends on your setup. If you have this connected to a very good battery bank, you'll be able to get more wattage out of it than if you have it connected to a standard automotive battery type setup. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.